<laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Unearthing the Supernaturals, Meeting of Warriors. <laughs> Take a seat around the fire and join Hero, Sean Clan, and Pattaya as we take a look into the charcoal and discuss matters of worlds that parallel our own. It is these worlds that have their own laws, their own legends and tales. What you're about to hear is legends and tales and lessons from warriors who have lived this way of life their entire lives. Armed with teachings that have been passed down from generation to generation, these teachings go beyond race and boundaries. They are teachings about the natural laws and how to interact with beings of the other side. Respect these teachings, or else we'll come looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Johnny Zaffis, a paranormal investigator, and uh, glad to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. The world famous. World famous. John Zaffis. <laughs> so the main, main purpose why we, uh, we asked you to do this, John, is because um, we're going to be uh, showing some of the overnight footage of the mm -hmm. overnight that we did over there. And it would be really cool to have your perspective on... Uh, what you saw and what you felt that night uh, with the Thunderbird. And uh, we're going to have your perspective, what you think about it. And then we're going to have Dave uh, talk about it a little bit more, too, as well on the episode to kind of shed a little bit more light to a little bit more of what's in the spiritual world that we encountered that night. Okay. Now, Dave, it was you and I in the beginning in that building, correct? That's when correct. you were interpreting okay because i'm trying to remember because i know marie and i walked got up and we had walked out after it got real intense so yeah that was just, that was you and i so uh the guys had gone to town real quick to get some snacks so um that's where i i was able to run in and be able to interpret a little bit of it okay. we we missed all the fun <laughs> <laughs> so you can go ahead and just tell um start out from maybe the beginning of uh uh, your experience you had over during the ceremony or just maybe talk go ahead and just talk about whatever uh, talk about the okay. experience you had or yeah all right um, you know basically uh, they, they, I was attending the uh, ceremony that was being done to bless everybody that was at uh, the Vulture uh, City uh, little conference that we had there that evening and during the course of it I was standing off to the side uh, of the circle there as everything was being presented and being done and um, I can remember uh, turning to the gentleman next to me I'm drawing a blank what his name um, oh gosh anyhow anyways and I turned and looked at him I said I think something just flew over us and I remember I looked up it and the only way I could describe it was the simple fact that it was almost and it wasn't like it was translucent or anything but it was huge and it was just like went over us and it just like moved a couple of times and i remember just standing there and i just said to myself well what the heck was that all about because a lot of times when things happen and occur i don't usually react in the moment i usually start to think about it or somebody will say something and then i'll really you know uh, start to think about it and uh you know try to digest it and everything and then we went through the uh the whole uh ceremony and everything was done and then um we chit chatted a little bit about it afterwards I, and the best way i was able to describe it was almost like you know a huge big bird just came over and it just like i didn't actually see a full form but it was like something translucent. It lit up a little bit up above and it fly, It had the way I'm going to describe it now is the only way I could think to describe it. It was like it flapped a couple of times because it was a breeze that came down. And then I just was watching it when it occurred. You could see I or I experienced it. I don't know if anybody else did, but it was like the ear. You could see the ear just coming down a couple of the different times. And I remember looking at it and just saying, how cool that was to experience something like that at that point i had no clue 
what exactly transpired or what happened till I had talked to you two afterwards and you know you just went back and forth and felt that you know it was Thunderbird that came over now when we as we were talking and everything um, you know uh, doing it from a politically pers- uh, proper way I guess to look at it where everybody doesn't offend anybody I got the impression you were like okay usually the white man doesn't experience that he doesn't usually see that happen you know and is witness to it and I think it was Dave or Nick or both of these at one point in time as we got talking and everything and you said to me well you're actually a brother and you don't even realize it <laughs> Beca- became our brother from that ceremony right there so <laughs> So, you know, then we had, um, we went over um, to one of the other buildings uh, where Marie had a little baby doll or or there was a little child spirit that was, uh, you know, they were communicating going back and forth. And I I was so engulfed in that because I could not get over the responses from the little girl spirit going back and forth with Maria. I mean, it, it just totally, it was so clear so profound that uh the child spirit was reaching out to her then at that point we had left and we went over into the other building where the kitchen area is i'm sorry i don't remember the names of the building but um we went over there and the communication was getting established and a spirit uh started coming through and you could tell it was an old spirit just by the way it was sounding. Now, Marie and I were sitting on the uh, windowsill uh, edge and several other people were in there and it was talking and it was coming through and we were trying to figure out what it was all about. And I kept saying you know, to Marie, you know, the different things that I was hearing, then she started telling me some of the things she was hearing. And what amazed me was she was, she, hearing exactly what i was hearing because a lot of us all pick up different things when we're listening to that and we interpret things differently yeah so um i believe it was at that point where we had called for uh, dave to come in and we were trying to figure out what it was and correct me if i'm wrong but i think you said you felt that it was navajo and old navajo uh, spirit that was trying to communicate and come through to us and then you know it kept going back and forth you were explaining some of the things that it was saying and i remember a couple of questions we were throwing out and at one point in time uh the ancient uh, spirit came through and said that 30 ancient ones were awoken and i wow. remember i just stood up at that point and i turned and looked at marie and marie said to me she goes that 30 ancient ones got awoken and i go yeah i said i don't know exactly what this is all about i said but you know it's happening and it's occurring i said dave's communicating going back and forth i said at that point i wanted to walk outside to see if things had shifted you know if we were out of the room and apparently they did not they you know kept up when you were doing the communications and everything and I believe that uh, one point in time, too, is when, um, Nick, I think this is when you came back into the picture. And when we were walking out, correct me if I'm wrong, and, you know, we were going back and forth trying to figure out whom and what everybody was communicating with. And that's when, you know, the sound had come through. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, to me, you know, I wasn't there. I didn't witness any of it. I believe earlier before we had left for the airport, Jay had mentioned something to me about they captured a sound, what they thought, you know, possibly might have been Thunderbird. I went, what? And, okay, and it was a fantastic thing. We were driving to the airport. And uh, Nick, I believe it was you that called. Yeah. And you had played what you guys had captured. And that was very odd at that point in time because all three of us were quiet in the car. That doesn't happen. (laughs) 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 And I just sat there and listened to it a couple of more times. 
then I remember uh, Nick and I were going back and forth and Nick, I said to you, I said, right now I'm getting so confused on everything that just transpired with this whole thing. I have to take a step back and I have to evaluate mm -hmm. and I have to, it, that's what I do. Yeah. And again, I did, I reflected upon it and I was thinking about it and I said, this story has to be told. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's something tying in with it. And at that point in time also, you had mentioned to me uh, the fact that uh, you had felt that or you had felt that something shifted, something had changed that, you know, when they were uh, digging on that side of that area, because that was a spiritual area for uh, Native American over there. And I wasn't aware of all that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but anyhow, um, in light of all of it and what transpired and catching the sound and everything, that was a wow moment for John's office. <laughs> it was it was it was a wow moment for us too. Yeah, like you know, you when you when you go on investigations and when you try to communicate with spirits, you know, how many times do you think that you're going to be contacting an ancient, you know, mythical thunderbird, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that 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 really threw us a curveball during our investigation over there. And Hero and I, just growing up knowing the ancient stories of what the Thunderbirds, uh, the roles they played. And with the Thunderbird, there are good, there are bad, depending on kind of which location, which area you're at, and then which tribe you are. But typically, in the Navajo Nation tribes, the Thunderbird used to go to villages and grab people. And then there used to be, a, um, or there is a mountain structure, I guess you could say, in New Mexico called Shiprock. And in that in that rock structure, they the Thunderbird used to grab the people and throw them against the the cliff face and kill them and eat them. So, for the Navajo in particular, the Thunderbird was kind of a very dangerous dangerous being. And so, we, we, there was excitement that hit us first that we captured the Thunderbird cry, and then immediately right after we were just like, oh crap, you know, there's a Thunderbird cry, there's a Thunderbird around here, you know. Do, do you feel? because we really haven't had an opportunity to talk about any of it. Do you feel, because I, with me, I know uh, with the situations, because the week prior, there was just a, another weird experience that I never had either, but not with Thunderbird or uh, anything of that. But do you feel this could par partially or can be tied into world events that are happening that, this was again something that was just you know like almost like a warning like you were saying to me you, you kept telling me you felt that this is almost a warning and a signal that would come forth now um again i i was fortunate enough where i was talking uh to one of my other friends that um i know and um we were just chit-chatting and going back and forth and um, he said the same thing to me. He, he goes, he goes, if I haven't known you for all these years, I would never believe you're telling me this story. I said, dude, it got witnessed by several, you know, there, there was a whole bunch of people there. I said, you know, you know I said, none of us were drinking. So, you know, yeah. the, the, you know it's it, uh, again, it, I said it was just in a blessing ceremony that it transpired, but. You know, again, I, I'm looking at it from many perspectives that I just feel that it was a warning. It was letting us know that it was watching over things. I said, that's my interpretation of it. You know, and that it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it's correct or it's right. But because I didn't at any point. But then again, you know, with me, a lot of times I just venture into things anyways, uh, you know, uh, where I felt that any of us were in danger, but I felt that the ancient ones, especially the woman, the ancient Navajo woman that was coming through, it, I w was so taken back and so intrigued when you were communicating, going back and forth, you know, speaking to her, you know, in the language and getting the responses and everything that, I mean, it just took me to the point where, again, I, I remember I had to go back outside and just take that step back. And Marie followed me right back out. She goes, I can't believe all this is even going on. <laughs> and I go, why? And then she was telling me some of the things that she heard. And I'm like, she was, he again, 
hearing some of the same things. So that's confirmation. Mm -hmm. I always look at that as confirmation when you're not actually comparing, but yet you're telling each other at the same time on what's, you know, so that was pretty cool. You know, the, the whole thing. I, I walked away looking at, uh, uh, Vulture uh, City from, or Vulture Town uh, from a different perspective. I look at it now more as a spiritual area than I do anything else now. Yeah. I definitely. really do. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And for <clears throat> since that, that particular moment and that particular night, uh, we did go to the High Council about it. We did let them know about the sighting, uh, the events that transpired, the many witnesses that saw it. And the big worry is now is when something of that ancient nature, especially the being that it was, the particular being in our culture and in other cultures as well, it is a sign of worldly events. It is a sign of the changes and a lot of things to come. And for as dramatic as it was, because there's oftentimes you'll have sightings for just one particular individual or one particular ceremony. But for in the manner that it did and how it came about, it is a huge warning of uh, uh, with that mind kind of digging up sacred sites is that the, um, how they interpret it is the spirit people, the, the ancient ones are upset for the path that this land is taking. There's there's a lot of um, disregard for those sacred sites. There's a lot of disregard for the spirits in general. And uh, that kind of goes into just people not taking care of the land. That goes into people uh, kind of going into investigating and interacting with spirits in the wrong aspects. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are kind of out of balance. And so oftentimes those sightings and those beings coming about is a sign like, hey, we are tired of things that are happening right now. And sometimes we have to take we have to take control of it. And it's oftentimes it's with beings of that nature. So. That's Interesting. kind of what they're thinking about. They're a little bit worried because, like I said, it's it's a being that, like, if okay, if a bear were to come up and actually speak or give a message or something, okay, yeah, that's a good sighting. But for a thunderbird to come out and for that spirit to be mentioning the 30 ancient ones that kind of were awakened, that's mm -hmm. a sign of huge worldwide proportions of something. Big changes are coming and big shifts in energy are coming. Which, again, parallels to everything that's happening worldwide right now. Definitely. I mean, you know, um, like I said, I think that was one of the most important and significant things, you know, for me. Because I normally won't talk about a lot of the personal things that occur or happen. But everything just kept telling my inner instinct that it needed to get out there so that people could kind of understand some of it. Yeah, and definitely. you know, you know the the rationale of, you know, thirty ancient ones being awoken or awake, really. I mean that that just took me so back that I I didn't even know how to comprehend it or really uh, think about it, and it took me a couple of days to process it. And I just took that step back and I said to myself, "Wow, mm -hmm. that was a major experience that transpired that night." Yeah. And it, 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 it's pretty funny. It's like we we were a lot of this stuff kind of happens when we just do like a normal ceremony or a blessing for somebody like a lot of this stuff just happens to us. We don't ask for it. Like the whole in, the whole intention for that stuff was to, you know, just do a blessing for everybody. But, you know, all this other stuff kind of just happened. And, you know, when 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 you don't ask for something and it pops up like that, you know, it is a message. And one thing I thought about it, too, another um, avenue of what it could mean is warning of you know the unfortunate events that's happening in Ukraine now in our ancient stories how these Thunderbirds were killed by our monster slayers Tobashis Chine and Nayet Nezane they use uh, a bow and arrow and in that arrow it is said that when it hit its target a giant tree formed out of it of smoke and they said that 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 giant tree what gave the idea to Albert Einstein to create the atomic bomb. So hence why a lot of the uranium that was mined to in the Manhattan project was mined in the four corners region on Navajo land, actually. Mm -hmm. 
So that Thunderbird could be representing, you know, some dark things that could be happening that could result from, you know, this war. You, you just took me back because now I don't know what is in this item I received. And I want to say, I think there's an arrow in it. That I just hold on for one. I gotta go get it. Hold on. Okay. I have to go. <laughs> Let me oh, see. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh man. Okay. That you just took me back again. I don't know if there's any significance or not, guys. Whoa. Whoa. What is that? Those are arrows. Those are Those old are arrows. arrows. Old arrows. And I just got this this past week. And it, basically it was a gift and um, nothing to do with a case or anything. But as soon as you said that, Nick, you did you see the way I looked at you when you said that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just said, wait a minute. That, I just got that thing this past week from, uh, uh, and I believe it had a couple of those different items that you could almost interpret as being arrows wow john this is getting weirder and weirder guys <laughs> you're, you're gonna end up being it's a monster connected. slayer you're gonna <laughs> john john the monster the slayer bow and you're gonna have to take out the, the monster now slayer. how how cool how cool is that that's really wow. cool wow that all just perfectly just lined up it's all connected and we had Nick. We haven't talked, right? No, no. Dave, no. we haven't talked. I didn't make <laughs> I didn't make anything of it till you just said that story with the the bow and arrow with them. Wow. wow. There's just those parallels that just happened, like just like how we said with that ceremony, the Thunderbird just came up. We didn't ask for it, and just like now, we bring up that story of the arrows, and then you know, you just so happen you have some sacred arrows with you. <laughs> So that that's brings usually what happens with UTS. You know, we go into these places. We don't. We don't ask for any of it. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> you know, the that... thing is, when you wholly and truly open yourself up to communications and allow the spirits to give their messages, then they have stories and messages to tell for sure. Well, that that's a uh, a key essential thing. I know you guys had, uh, or one of you had caught some of that video I, I had done. And every time I tried to talk about the Thunderbird, my system would shut off. Yeah. Four times in a row, the video was terrible. I, everything was just shutting down. And I got to the point where I just said, okay, that's it. Then when I looked back at it, I went, oh, I'm not leaving this disaster. <laughs> it looked so bad. <laughs> so, but any, anyhow, it worked out good. Th th this just got me so intrigued, it's not even funny. Where, where did you get those? Those, those arrows? Okay, they, I, wow. I don't know if it's something that's very old. I'm not 100% sure about it or the, the history, if it, what it was, but I'm just finding it intriguing now. Yeah. I mean, See, you know, got again. The, the black and white and then the markings on it. That, that That's almost like monster slaying arrows. That's the, in the old stories, like in the dances and stuff that depict those stories, they make arrows like that for the dances. And Look at this one. To, Dang. That's meant to trap and hold them down. Wow. Dang. Wow. Now, guys, I don't have any Native American in me. Not that I'm a werewolf. <laughs> You're the caretaker of some stuff, that's for sure. Like I said. Don't worry, John. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm just, but the, this whole thing is intriguing me because, Dave, like you said, the, the, uh, uh, one thing that, you know, I wanted to stress so much was the simple fact that so many of us get messages, so much information gets processed and comes through that people just don't pay attention to and, and they just toss it by the wayside and instead of holding on and embracing and trying to understand some of those old mess you know it, it's so key and it's so i've always done that my uncle taught me that right you know he said always pay attention to your environment pay attention to what's going on around you once you stop doing that you lose too much. Mm -hmm. 
And that always had stayed with me. Now, here's another thing that transpired was I love to walk. I walk all over the place. And I had taken a walk. I, I It was one day last week. I was out and I was just walking and walking. Now, I don't know if it was my imagination. I still don't know. It was still light out. It wasn't dark or anything. But I kept hearing like drums were going off. Mm-hmm. And then I just stood there for a few minutes and I was trying to comprehend it and pay attention to it. I go, okay, are there workers? Is there anything going on on the other side of the river? But I, as I stood there, I didn't see or hear. Anytime I would stop and focus, it stopped. But then it would kick back in again when I started walking. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So I don't know if there was another symbolic thing if it was my imagination i don't know but it did transpire and it did happen and i kept it in my mind and i said when i you know uh, uh thought about it or when i was talking about it i had to make sure that got documented also too because that that was another thing to me that is very important that this all got documented i don't know why mm-hmm. but it was very important to me that and i'm so glad that this is happening you're yeah, right that's that's how yeah. we felt too is because like you don't you don't see these these all these parallels lining up for and it'd be no reason it'd be like oh okay well you know it happened all right let's just go on with our everyday life you know it, it has there's a reason behind it you know mm-hmm. there's there's definitely a reason and so with with things that that's been going on um, we've been seeing a lot of kind of spikes in paranormal activity and then actually a lot of spikes in beings that are acknowledging the old laws and the old stories and to have all this coming about the way it did um i was asked this question actually by someone someone from the high council he says okay you have this uh, this information you have the visual evidence the audio evidence you have the testimonies so what's next in the paranormal community is the paranormal community ready to interact with these ancient beings uh dave the the best way i'm going to answer that is i would hope uh for the researchers that are researchers in our field with being able to uh, gain knowledge and get an understanding that They're trying to, it's trying to present messages and they're respectful of it. I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to be done uh, to a point um, where it's taken, you know, totally out of context and just being exploited. No, I don't want to see that. You know, and again, we all know how that goes a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I, I guess it's when... When you meet people and you click with people, you click for life. There's just certain people in our lives that are like that. You can tell people that are spiritual people and people that are doing things and what that path is that they're on. And that's something I pay, I pay, I still pay attention to it to this day. You know, uh, what is your purpose? What is your intent on uh, gaining some of that knowledge or, you know, uh, anybody sharing the knowledge what are you going to do with that so again yeah i hope some of the researchers use some of the knowledge and they use it to get a better understanding of things that you know again they just thought were you know uh, tales or stories Mm -hmm. that's something that 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 what i responded with to him was like yeah we can interact and see these things but i think a reason why it presented itself in the way it did it's also a teaching because we're the ones kind of telling the stories because we're the ones that are kind of like um i guess have that knowledge these beings it's not just a local area these beings i'm sure are spreading all over the world they're starting to make themselves known a a bit more it's a worldwide Mm -hmm. phenomenon so with us capturing what we did Hopefully, people will be like, okay, if we encounter something like this, at least there's some knowledge that knows, hey, we got to have respect. We got to understand a little bit of the natural laws and at least have some sort of offering because these beings go way beyond just the normal everyday ghosts that I guess people are used to. 
these mm-hmm. beings are ancient beings that pretty much shape the world our natural and spiritual worlds that we interact with each and every day mm-hmm. and so with them coming about now even just for the indigenous people a, a sighting like that is a calling for teaching the youth like hey we have to remember our stories we have to remember our teachings because if you it could just be the spirits just out and about doing its thing and if you happen to cross paths with it do you know what to do if you were to cross paths with it mm. and i think i that's think that's our i think that's our sign that we really need to kick up our our teachings podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and then john you're a keeper you're a teacher you have the the ability to teach others and you witnessed it yourself so it's uh, i full heartedly and even the high council thinks it's a sign of great change and a sign that we all need to be ready for those changes whatever it's going to be okay again i i you know with me the way i interpret and the way i look at things over the course of uh our past two and a half years on everything we've all gone through and we've witnessed, I never thought I'd ever see the days of, you know, uh, pandemics and another war and, you know, just these bizarre things. I just never thought I'd ever be around to witness it, but we are, and we're living it Mm -hmm. and we have to, you know, move through that. I, you know, I, I take all that into consideration and, look at it but again too um a key element always with me no matter uh what the culture what the belief system is it's one thing to share that knowledge and hopefully and you keep your you know you you hope people use that knowledge on a positive and not do some of the bizarre crazy things that we see people do (laughs) you know they want more they want more and you know they can't accept just that journey that's already happening and letting it unfold they want it yesterday that you know that and you know i watch it time and time again with people and i go you're missing it you're you're missing the whole journey that you're supposed to be on with you know advancing with a lot of it Mm -hmm. so again I, i hope people get that from you know what you're trying to share with everybody and to get some of that information out there and people use it for a positive that you know i always hope that no matter which way i look at it or you know what it is i intertwine with i always hope for that i don't i don't think all that ha- was just coincidental i thought all that ha- mm-hmm. i think everything happens for a reason in life i'm a firm believer that everything is planned out mm-hmm. and it happens can uh we alter things on certain things i do believe you know certain things can be if we have that knowledge and if we're paying attention we can avoid certain things but other things have to happen mm-hmm. they, they they have to follow that uh journey that that has already been presented yeah. now i you know again i'm roman catholic we're not supposed to think like that you know and we're not supposed to look at things like that but again you know and and my stance has always been you know uh, um uh, i'm interested in the paranormal the supernatural and that encompasses everything Mm -hmm. nothing is even nothing is eliminated nothing so therefore you know it's an important uh, journey on a spiritual level also Mm-hmm. I look at it from that perspective. So, again, it, it's it happened. There were reasons. Uh, we all clicked that night, <laughs> and you know, it, it, it just that bond is there now. It's just there. Yeah. So it, it's uh, a beautiful thing and a positive thing that you know. Because I always, I with me too. I always got to walk away with something on a positive level on why something occurred or why something happened mm-hmm. definitely. and our paths were definitely meant to cross yeah and that that that's one thing like i really think is at that night there were a lot of key influential paranormal people who are in the field who were there that night so mm-hmm. you know that bird showed itself to all of us because i mm-hmm. believe that message has faith in us that we all together can be able to teach what we witness and 
you know, find that message within all of that. Mm -hmm. And plus, yeah. plus, John, I just got to say I love talking with you, man, because it's so refreshing to speak with somebody who has a, uh, the same knowledge that you have of the paranormal, because a lot of the stuff that you speak about is a lot of the stuff that we're taught in our uh, traditional Native American ways. So it's just like it's refreshing to see somebody else who knows a lot of the basics of what the paranormal society is. And I just think that's through your experience and your interaction with your uncle and, uh, and Lorraine Warren. And yeah. all your guys' experience that you guys have gone through throughout the years. You guys and, have gone through it, the spiritual yeah. world. You guys all went through it, and you've learned the lessons from it. Mm -hmm. Just like how they teach us kids in indigenous cultures, you guys have lived it. So you have those lessons and those teachings. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Each and everything, no matter you know um how bizarre or how crazy it gets you know it, here's an important element that you know i i talk about a lot too is people say well you know uh, this one does that or this show does this that one does that and da, 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 da. and you know a lot of times with me too if i do something or put something out there getting criticized or somebody making all kinds of remarks or anything like that it doesn't bother me. <laughs> I, I don't have the time for it. Yeah. And I learned that from them because I watched them take the beatings. I watched how they would, you know, go through it, meaning Ed and Lorraine. Yeah. And they would still push forward, continuously still push forward. And I always kept that close to me and always was able to, you know, wrap myself with that and realize that you're always going to have that. But you always got to take that higher road, mm -hmm. as we all know, you know, no matter what transpires or what happens, take that higher road, because that's going to be that that takes us higher up on our journey. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just believe in all that. There, there were a couple of uh, Buddhists um, that I uh, became very good friends with, again, uh, through my aunt and uncle and some of the, the lessons and some of their journeys and listening to some of their things again incorporates with what we're all talking about here yeah so yeah. it's in, it's an important element with learning and understanding and listening to those elders when they talk to you about these things mm -hmm. they're trying to teach us something yeah that, mm -hmm. that's one thing i always find really cool is you know you you talk to so many different cultures some way mm -hmm. somehow they all intersect somehow you know they always yes, they do yeah their teachings always you know crisscross like that you know it's like they parallel at some points yeah yes they definitely. did they, they definitely definitely do and again at the end of the day it it it's not an important element to me on how somebody interprets what they want to refer to as god or how they want to refer to something as you know uh, as we call negative or devils and demons and everything these things occur they happen in every culture they happen worldwide that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years <laughs> so there's freaking something going on <laughs> that's, for sure. that's something yeah. we can all agree on <laughs> yes yes <laughs> You know, again, and how it's interpreted or how it's looked at, that's okay. That's all right. You know, <laughs> and um, uh, again, it, it's just, it, I'm very glad I had the journey that I had with all this. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, I was able to be involved with uh, so many different things in, in belief systems and everything, because that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it, it's helped. And it, it just... It broadens things even more. That, that I think that's you know what's a, a key element uh, about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Nice, very nice. So I had to have a question too. Is uh, mm -hmm. from this particular sighting, from the particular moment that you saw these things, and now the arrows being presented to you, kind of does it change anything as far as your approaches, or are you going to be aware of anything? Is there any type of shift in? Uh, I guess mental thinking at all from this particular sighting that you've had in the past couple of weeks. Absolutely. Um, what it's actually done was again get me to that point where I take that step back to evaluate and to again look at things and realize 
uh, there are things that are coming that are going to be happening. The, uh, the, the shift is taking place. It's, it, again, across everything, across the boards with everything, things are changing. And so many people are feeling it. So many people uh, are realizing it. There, there's just things in play that, that are happening that need to happen. And it's just a, a, a bizarre time, but that's okay. Because we need, we need some of that ancient knowledge to come back to the forefront and for some people to get grounded again. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm interpreting this right at this point in time. Because now when I'm speaking or, or, or talking about things, the, the whole Thunderbird thing is, is now incorporated. It's there now. <laughs> you know, it, it has to be there because there's a message. Yeah, definitely. Whether that message is to, for me or one of the people I'm speaking to or a anything, if there's something there, it will get related and it will get passed on. So that that is what I'm walking away from from with this whole experience that night. Awesome. Right. right? It's so cool. John, I also uh, want to show you one photo that was taken. I'm not too sure if you've seen this photo. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. This was actually taken during the ceremony. Uh, this is um, Dave wearing his face mask. So let me go death ahead mask, yeah. The death mask. Sorry. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, so not too sure if you see it in the full color. But if you yes. look into the smoke right here in this section... Initially, when the photographer saw it, he, he looked at this and Hero and I looked at each other. We said it looked like a buffalo skull. But uh, this was before you actually told us about what you've seen over at um, Vulture City after the ceremony. Now, even after we caught the, the cry of the Thunderbird, one thing that was really interesting that we looked at is Hero kind of outlined what it looked like so you can kind of see like an eye an eye and then like a beak right here you see the line of the beak right there with the absolutely yes i could see exactly exactly what you're talking about but now the first thing i noticed as soon as you had uh posted that i looked and i go look at how the energy is all around yeah it's everywhere mm -hmm. and that right there is telling me that when I had mentioned that there were three different times where I just felt like the air come down yeah and it was like something moving above that's got to be around the time framing probably when um, when uh, one of the times when I felt that that the air was being pushed down like I don't, it's the only way I could describe it because I didn't actually see a full form thing but the, there was something translucent but it was all over it wasn't just in one one thing that's a cool picture that that's i i i might have somebody might have shown me that but there was another picture that somebody had shown also that they captured i wish i could tell you who the heck had it but there was another picture that someone had taken during the ceremony and it had a full uh, skull to it and I believe it had a couple of horns on it too. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Definitely. So that they, um, they say when you're doing in ceremony, the smoke will reveal the beings that are around and the message oftentimes can either come through the smoke or even the charcoal. And when that aspect comes about and I'm wearing my mask, I, uh, so the guys told me I reached in and grabbed fire. I do not remember that oh, you whatsoever. Did. No, you did it more than one time. I did not, and then yeah, no you, burns, nothing. I know. I, I, I actually I forgot about it till you just brought it up because <laughs> I remember there were then the second time you did it and I'm going, what is he doing? And I'm like, he's gonna get burnt. <laughs> and you didn't react. You didn't do anything. It was when you were putting the um. The cedar on there? Cedar. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because you did it, and I'm watching your hand, and I'm going, 
the heat, the flame isn't even affecting you. I remember standing there and watching it and it was, I was like, wow, you know, again, it was. And then I remember afterwards we were all talking and you were showing us your hand and there was no, you know, burn marks or nothing. Yeah. So I again, about that. I was like, I don't even remember doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so afterwards I was like, I did that. Yeah. And it, it's just it, a normal occurrence when you're around hero. <laughs> so that just goes to show even though we didn't intend it to be a really groundbreaking ceremony it was still every ceremony we do is important every ceremony we do has that potential to be i guess world changing because you open up the doors and like me i don't remember doing any of that so there were moments during the ceremony where the spirits did that mask did take over and with that being being around, it's showing itself and the parallels that happened with the the spirit coming through talking with us and you hearing the cry of the Thunderbird, you guys witnessing it, it's showing up in the in the smoke and the everything that happened around it. It all is majorly compelling and it all is a major it almost had to be that compelling for a message to be coming across in the way that it did. Well, it did with me. I know that now. You know, it took a couple of days for it to to uh, sink in and for it to register, but um, that that was a wow night for me. That's a that's what I call a wow night, because people, you know, and people say this to me all the time because I'm hitting 50 years of being involved with uh, the work we all do, and they go, "Do you ever get bored? Do you ever get tired of it?" And I go. No, because I never know what the hell's going to happen next. You just, you just don't know. You don't know. There's, there's always something that occurs. There's always something that happens that, um, again, will take me to that next spot where I take that step back and go, you just never know. You, you, you <laughs> don't know. You know, and again, a lot of the paranormal investigators – say this continuously to me they'll go when you're around you never know what's going to happen stuff always seems to happen when you're around right. <laughs> i go well i don't do anything i'm not you know uh, uh provoking on anything or or anything it just you know it, it just happened but again there was a reason for it and i think it was for uh uh it to be spoken about to to get it out and to share some of that information and um, again, I, I do feel from the indigenous end of all of this worldwide mm -hmm. that, that there's things occurring and that there's things happening, you know, during ceremony and stuff of all this magnitude that is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I don't know that, but again, you know, again, I just feel that way. Because again, uh, with all that, uh, it you know, it's more grounded, you know, uh, which you know the those types of ceremonies and things. It's more grounded, so therefore, it's more in touch with Mother Nature, Earth. D there's a difference, and I can comprehend that, and I can wrap around it, and I can understand it. Yeah, and, oh, and it, to me, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> definitely that's why we love you because you have that that base understanding of that the fluidity of motion of the world how it affects everyone so um real quick um uh, we might have to hop onto another session real quick because you know we have limited time but um for us younger generation we're we're, we're bringing up kind of our little generation of, of paranormal investigating with the events that transpired and kind of you meeting us do you have any words of wisdom for us in uh, our future? Um, you're definitely going to be teaching a lot more. You're going to be venturing outside of your comfort zone. Um, the both of you are grounded enough to be able to do it. You know your roots. You, you, you were called. You were called to do that. You're showing it. You are. It's okay. Predestination again. I'm gonna go right back to that. <laughs> it's it's already there, mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to reach 
and you're going to be able to uh, get that through at certain levels with certain people with some of that information. And that's key and essential to keep that journey going, to keep some of the information going. I mean, again, you know, we all understand each other and there's a lot of things that aren't meant to come to the forefront. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it's just, you know, our ways of protection and the way of protecting, you know, uh, what we do and how we do it. So mm-hmm. therefore, but that is already there. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a tough road, but it's already there. Mm-hmm. And it, it's going to be something very enlightening. And there, again, um, you must fo- follow your instinct with that because you're both very good at that. Mm-hmm. You could study a person in a heartbeat and you could usually judge immediately. So that that's the, the important element where um, you do this because you're going to have uh, a lot of them out there that are just mean, nasty people. We deal with them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, again, and no matter uh, what the area is, but you got you got some of that information that, that definitely needs to get out there to be able to share with people. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be a pretty good journey, dude. Dudes, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So John. we're looking forward to for sure. Yeah, and and meeting people like you, John, and just kind of meeting the paranormal community. And for us, as much as we can, we try to be sponges. Yeah, we have teachings, but we we want to be able to walk in, in this world and understand the people and their experiences that they've gone through, too. And just try to be as, as much of a sponge as we can. And the biggest thing for us is the spirits and the interactions that we have. They are our teachers. Mm-hmm. We don't know a whole lot. Yeah, we have our, our teachings and we have our stories. But they are the ones that are teaching us. They are the ones that are going to be like, hey, here's our story. Here's how you're going to go about telling it. Or here's a teaching that you have. And then just the people that we meet, it's like you said, it's not by coincidence. It's meant to happen. And mm-hmm. the, that's how I tell my, um, the people on my crew, my brother, and we're all brothers. And I said, hey, things are going to happen for a reason and things are supposed to come about the way they are. Yeah, mm-hmm. there might be some hardships and struggles, but... Those are also teaching moments. Those are moments that we have to remember and pretty much as much as we can soak in everything about the journey and enjoy it. That's it. That's the, the important thing. And, um, you know, again, um, I just keep, uh, I always look at it from that perspective of, uh, that journey, you know, um, might get knocked down. I'm sure I'm going to get knocked down many more times before I turn into a ghost. <laughs> but I always get back up, and mm-hmm. I still, you know, keep moving forward. And I'll go, okay, as long as I understood, I learned from that, and I got an understanding of that. And it probably for a, a lot of us with, with this end of it and everything, it's very difficult to comprehend and understand that you know it, it's the nature of people when they hurt people it's the nature of it it's a very difficult thing to uh comprehend and move forward but that's okay we have to do it mm-hmm. we got to do that yep. yep oh man so excited for the future and you know it's always a blessing to talk with you john thank you so much for hopping on with this call with us you know, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for your knowledge and stay awesome and stay protected, my good friend. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> if any thoughts or anything come about about thinking uh, about what happened, transpired, or anything subsequently, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're, we'll do whatever we can to, to talk with you, even if it's just uh, some thought processes or anything. We're open books. Well, I pre- I appreciate that very, very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome, sweet. All right. Well, you guys if you are- ever need me too, you know how to get a hold of me now. <laughs> Facebook. Awesome. <laughs> well, I gotta have some of that lasagna, and I, I should show up around Christmas time. Well, I'm sweat at Christmas time. How's that? Oh yeah, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> get out. It's nice and cool outside. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. You got it. 
All right. Well, thank you so okay. much, John, for having All me right. on here. And, you know, hope you have a great day, John. Okay. The same to you guys and safe journeys, my friends. <laughs> thank you. Talk to you later, John. Take care. Bye-bye.